Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 135 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is my video lecture over 3.1 from Chapter 3. Before we start this chapter, let's take a look at the big picture. Okay, so Chapter 2 and Chapter 1, we talked about collecting data, and Chapter 2 was mostly about organizing data. A big uh, distinction we made in Chapter 1.2 was the difference between quantitative and qualitative uh, data. Chapter 3 is really going to focus on quantitative data. Everything we do in Chapter 3 is pretty much based on quantitative data, stuff with numbers, things that we can do arithmetic to. So that's why you see in Chapter 3 we're going to crunch the numbers. We're going to come up with numerical summaries of this data, like means, medians, sample, uh, standard deviations, uh, and in, uh, so we'll, we'll look at measures of center, as they say right here, measures of center. So like what's the what's the best estimate of the middle of the data measures of variability which is like how spread out is the data is it very compact or very spread out measures of position and other summaries and chapter four we'll look at two variables so in 3.1 we're talking about measures of center so what we mean by this is the best estimation of the middle of the data set so imagine a bunch of numbers like our ages in class what would be the best center or middle age and we're going to come up with some names for these things. First, obviously, would be to calculate the mean of a given data set. We all know how to do this. This is the average of the data set. This is where you add them all up and divide by however many numbers you have. In statistics, we call that the mean. We also talk about the median and sometimes why the median might be preferable to the mean. Uh, we all know how to calculate the mean, but we're also going to talk about the median and sometimes use that. And finally, we'll talk about the mode as well. At the end of this section, we'll talk about how skewness, remember the shapes we talked about in chapter 2.2, bell-shaped, right-skewed, and left-skewed. So when we have right-skewed and left-skewed and uh, symmetrical data sets, how they affect these measures of center that we're talking about right here in this section. So let's start with the mean. The mean is the most well-known and widely used measure of center. It's the average. It's taken by adding everything up. Uh, adding all the data values that you have, so imagine, imagine adding all up, up all our ages, excuse me, and then dividing by the number of students in the class. That would be the mean, the the mean of our ages in class. So, um, we have what's called the sample mean. All right, and we have a formula here, right? The sample mean as x bar. Okay, we're going to get used to this symbol big time. We're going to see this a lot. X bar is the sum of all the data values that's the mathematical symbolization for taking the sum of all your data values and we're going to divide it by the number of people that we have uh, have in the classroom or the number of data values that we have this lowercase n right here is the sample size okay so we already know how to do that that's just giving you a lot of terms and definitions we'll talk about more in class and we'll see it the other one is the population mean the population mean is uh, usually unknown okay so think about this if we wanted to know the average age of all CCD students it's there's a, it's it's very likely that we won't be able to conduct a census of every single student in the school and get their age or if we wanted to know the average height of every single CCD student it's going to be very difficult to, to measure everybody's height because students are all over the place so we usually do not know the population mean so we have this Greek letter that we define for it called mu, all right, and it's the Greek low, lowercase Greek letter m. The population size is denoted by capital N, and the formula is here. The population mean mu, this this u right here, is equal to the sum of all the of all the numbers divided by the number of items in the population. Very much like the sample mean down here, but we're just using a little bit different notation: capital N versus versus lowercase n and mu versus x bar. Remember x bar is the sample mean and mu is the population mean. Now, if we wanted to know the average height of all CCD students, what we would do is collect a sample. We talked about this in 1.2. You need to, in order to make estimations, we have to collect a sample and the, uh, the mean that we get from that sample called the sample mean could be, it could be an estimate of the population mean, the average heights of all CCD students. But it may or may not be a good estimate. So for instance, look at this original sample here. 
notice how the data values are all pretty close. So this red value right here is the mean. But let's say that we have a bunch of data values that are really close, and then our next sample data value is much, 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 much greater than the rest of the data values. Look at what happens to the mean. It gets pulled to the right, and that should make sense because this, this 6,000 here is probably greater than the sum of all these data values combined. So when you have a ballooned number in the numerator, it really makes the, the sample mean, or either mean, uh, skewed to the right. And pretty inaccurate measure of center. So uh, the sample mean, what we call, we call it sensitive to outliers like this 6,000. So sometimes the sample mean can be a good estimate of the population mean, or sometimes in this case, the sample mean would not be a good estimate of the population mean. So this is where the median comes in. In statistics, the median of a data set is the middle data value, median middle, like median in the highway or the interstate. Okay, so uh, when the data values, it's, sorry, it's the middle data value when you put the data into order. Okay, so one way to do it is you could list out all the numbers in order and cross off from the outsides until you get to the middle. If you have an odd number data set, then that middle number is going to be a single number and you circle it and that's the median. However, if you have an even number of data values, when you get down to the middle, you're going to end up with two in the middle. In order to find the mean from that, you just take the mean, or sorry, in order to find the median, when you have two data values in the middle, you just take the average or the mean of those two middle values. So notice this same picture that we had from the last slide. This green value, this green triangle, is actually the median. So notice, when the mean and the median are close, a lot of the data values are pretty close. And then we had this 6,000 out here to the right that uh, stretched the mean all the way out to almost 1250. But notice the median just moved just a little bit, just basically one position over, and the median in this case will be a better measure of center, a better measure of center than the mean. So we have to consider these two scenarios. When the mean and the median are the same, we usually prefer to use the mean, and when the median, or sorry, when the mean gets pulled off to the right or the left, we prefer to use the median. Lastly, the mode is uh, our third measure of center. It's the least popular, but um, it is the, uh, by definition, the mode of a data set is the data value that occurs with the greatest frequency. So in order to have a mode at all, you have to have at least two data values repeat. So uh, if all values just occur once in a data set, then you have no mode. If you have one data value that occurs the most, then you have one mode. But there are cases where you can have certain values repeat the same number of times. So if we had uh, three people that were six foot one and three people that were five foot eight, and those were the those heights both, or, sorry, those heights repeated three times, and those were the only heights that repeated three times, then we would have two modes. So uh, we'll talk about that in class and look at some scenarios there. So. So, uh, with this data set here, if we were looking at the number of Twitter followers for each celebrity, the sample mean would be taking them all up, adding them all up, excuse me, and dividing by the number of uh, data values, which is 10, 5.11 million. The median would be the middle. This is already in ascending order, and that's 5.15 million. And the mode, it looks like two people have 4.4 million followers, so 4.4 million is the mode. All right, lastly is a short talk. We already mentioned it a little bit with this previous slide, talking about how the mean is sensitive to extreme values while the median is not sensitive to extreme values. And this gets into skewness and measures the center. That picture that we were talking about is very similar to this one, where the mean got pulled off to the right because we have very large values here, not many of them, but very large values, pulling the mean and ballooning it out to the right. And generally, the median is a better measure of center. This is the skewed right shape. Here is the, the mirror image of that on the skewed left. And then lastly, when the, when the uh, distribution is bell-shaped, the mean, median, mode should all be pretty much in the center. Okay? This is a very, very important slide to remember. Well, I'm going to ask questions over and over again about if you know the mean is greater than the median, like this scenario, then that means that the data could be skewed right. If the mean is less than the median, like this picture, then the data could be skewed left. And if they're about equal, then the data is bell-shaped. 
Those are very important things, and you have to understand the so you have to understand the relationship between the mean and the median, and how to compute all of them and what they mean. Till then, we'll see you next time.